when you're going on these loans, it's almost like, not that you're getting further away from Arsenal, but do you feel like, how do I phrase this properly? Like each loan is like you're getting further and further away or you're getting further and further towards your Arsenal opportunity? I think... Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game Podcast. There's cameras all over yeah, here so bro. I don't even know where to look to introduce you. But I'm with my right hand man Dej, what are you saying? Bro, I'm good. New setting, new vibe, new energy, new guests. So I'm looking forward to this pod. <laughs> no, no, definitely. This is one that got turned over pretty quickly. So we appreciate like the quick feedback. But before we introduce our guests, I just want to plug the socials. Our Twitter is at podcast underscore TBG. Our Instagram is at pod underscore TBG and our TikTok that's closing on on 10k subscribers is TBG pod. Like the video and leave a comment on YouTube because the more you comment and the more you like the video, the more it helps the algorithm and the bigger and better guests we get. We are delighted to announce we are joined in the studio with Arsenal youngster and Ipswich loanee. Tyrese John Jules. Big up, big up, bro, <laughs> man. Big up, bro. Thank you, thank you. Nice to be here. No, no I love for coming on. We've been trying to get you on for a bit, and obviously, I know the turnaround was quite quick. Yeah. Because obviously, we know people close to the team and stuff. So, like, love for coming on and showing your support, bro. No problem. No, we appreciate it. So, yeah, man, just to kick things off, take us back to the humble beginnings, bro. How did it start for you? Well, I'm from West London, Queen's Park, West London. So, um, I think. It all started, well, that's what I, my, my parents told me anyway. So <laughs> it all started when I was about, what, four, five, just in the house, just always at a ball on my feet. I'm, I come from a, a footballing family, really. A couple of my uncles and my dad used to play, not high level, but I used to play. So, yeah, ever since, really, I was a kid, it's always been football, football. So kicking around in the house, breaking things on the floor, <laughs> mum shouting at me. And then um, my dad took me to, like, a... Five minutes down the road, there was a local like, little football session on a Saturday. And um, ever since then, I haven't looked back, really. Um, he said like, he could see something straight away. So And so did the, the guys running it. So quickly went into Sunday League team when I was about six, seven. And then slowly progressed. I was there for like a year. Then got scouted for Charlton at like, I think, seven. Um, and I was there doing well, enjoying it. Um, there for about a year, year and a bit. Played against Arsenal when yeah. it was about eight. Then done pretty well in that game, scored a few man, goals. You're talking yeah. lightly, you banded it <laughs> up, man. Come on. <laughs> you know what humble, hum, to the humble beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, played against Arsenal. Um, and yeah, from then I've not looked back since. I've been there ever since eight years old, signed properly under nine. So yeah, I've been there pretty much my whole life, really. So yeah. So what, have you always been a striker? Because I've spoken to like friends that have coached at Arsenal and they said at that youth team level, you were sort of destroying it. You were wreaking havoc, <laughs> dominating defences. So was that a position that came naturally to you or where did you play initially? Yeah, I was striker and like wing. Back in the day, you know, I had a lot of energy just running up and down. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and I like to score goals. So wing, striker, it didn't really matter to me. I just loved playing football and being out there. So yeah, I don't really mind. So obviously you had the appetite to play football from like a very young age, but when did you notice that? Hold on, poof, I'm on jobs. Like I can, I can do something. <laughs> um, I w- I wouldn't say I would say until about under fifteens, under sixteens. Like obviously being at Arsenal for so long, you've got to be, you have some talent. So, but I was never like the main guy. That there's always I would not say the main guy, but there was always like guys around me who were doing so well, and I wouldn't like to watch them too much, but. I didn't think that, oh, yeah, like I'm going like, to make, I'm going to do big things until like under 15, under 16, I really started to believe in myself. I was getting like, recognition from like, England and started to play for England, getting sponsorships and stuff like that. And I got my scholar when I was 16. So then I really started to believe in myself and really believe that I could take it somewhere. 
yeah, you said that you were playing with like you know those killers yeah. in your age group, and I know I've done some research. I know Eddie's roughly around the same age mm-hmm. as you. You played with Saka. So who are those people in and around your age group at the time that were sort of like seen as the main guys? Yeah, you had like you said Eddie. Obviously, he's older than me, but especially when I when I um, went full time, I was seeing him a lot and watching him train, training with him, and playing with him. So like I said, he was that guy I was looking up to. I was trying to take his space, but also <laughs> be on the same team. And he was he was one of my boys. So at the same time, it's just um focusing on myself and then seeing where it could take me. But like I said, back in the day, I had guys like Trey Coyle, I don't know if you've oh, heard yeah, of him. Oh, yeah, the winger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, winger. yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, Emil was near my age. Bakayo was near my age. Um, a guy called Xavier Michi, I don't know if you heard him as well. He's playing in Germany right, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So guys like that were doing a lot at that, that age and still are doing well. So, yeah, but like I said, I was really focusing on myself and just staying humble and waiting for my turn. Yeah, because youngsters, you mentioned something interesting about like sponsorships, boot deals and stuff like that. So how is that experience? Because you always hear sort of young players get trying to get poached by agents. Come with me. Yeah, I yeah. can get you this boot deal yeah, with Nike, yeah, yeah. Adidas. So how was that? It's uh, it's different because you start to feel like you're, you're fine, your talent's finally getting recognised and people are starting to, to want to get do things with you more and help you more. But you've got to be careful at the same time. Like you said, agents, you never know what agents are here genuinely on for the other reason so you got to be careful and, and really sit down in family and really <laughs> relax and t- take the thing out of things and just mm. make the right decision but yeah and like I said it's good it's good to see that you get recognised so obviously you're 15 your name is ringing alarm bells around <laughs> Arsenal you signed that scholarship what are the family saying how proud are they yeah family super proud I think Especially from the comment, my mum's done so much with me, like taking me to training, um, leaving work early, late nights, early mornings. So I think my my family were, I was doing it for them really. I wanted to repay them in a way to say thank you for all the things you did for me. And so yeah, they were super proud and they still are super proud. So I hope to continue doing them proud. Mm, so in terms of family, I think that's a big thing that doesn't mention that doesn't get mentioned mm-hmm. alongside football in itself because you need that support system when you're coming through yeah. the people to take you to the games yeah, let's exactly. say you've had a bad game those are the people to console you and say oh, don't worry yeah. you know Ty it's going to be okay next game next game so were your family always football based like did they understand the game or yeah you know yeah what I'm saying definitely my, my mum watches football as well my dad everyone watches football in my family so everyone understood and knew how I was doing and they would always tell me if I had a good game bad game Dad mostly had had a bad game, <laughs> but um, yeah, it as it, it helped me to get to where I am today. So you got to be able to take criticism on board and and improve and take it to take it to the next level. So yeah. Mm, so I wanted to talk about you breaking into the first team because obviously, as I said, when I was reading up, I saw that Una Emre was a massive fan of you. Yeah. He took you on the preseason tour, integrated you into the first team and stuff like that. So. From that jump up from, let's say, under 15, 16s, I know there's like under 23s and stuff. Yeah. How was it transitioning into the first team fold? Yeah, it was it was tough, to say the okay. least. <laughs> because obviously you're used to playing with guys your age and or a bit older, but you go and you get to the first team, they've been doing this for years and years at the top level. So you're... As soon as you're the first session, you're thinking, fucking hell, like, sorry, it's not a PG, so, man. It's not PG. I must say, prove it. Fully independent on this platform. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm thinking, like, this is this is different. Like, everything's faster, everyone's stronger. So, you really got to, like, you got to treat every game like a train. Like, I mean, every training like a game, like, it means a lot. So, especially all the eyes are looking at you. Obviously, you want to impress the manager, your teammates. You want to come back and train with the first team more. So, Every impression you gotta make sure it's good. So in terms of that integration, like what would you say was the like biggest challenge? Was it sort of like pressure or nerves? Like what exactly was that big challenge that you faced? I think obviously it's pressure on yourself. Mm-hmm. You wanna you know what talent you have and you wanna show it so much that you can do too much sometimes. So I think it's just handling the pressure in a good way, mm-hmm. taking it on board and relaxing, but doing the stuff at the same time. Obviously, you're going to be nervous training training with the first team. You should watch them on TV from when you was young. So I think that's natural. But like I said, you've got to use it in a good way and, and really express yourself. So what was that first sort of welcome to, to first team football moment? That, like, you know, you go over to the first team of training and you're like, Phew, you know what, this is this is the big league. Yeah. Um, I think 
I think probably one of my first sessions I went over alone because normally like back in the day, they used to like when it was like international break and then you have like some some of the first oh, team yeah, and yeah, some yeah. Of the, so we we do like eleven v elevens but it would be like all the twenty threes and eighteens versus like the first team and that so it weren't really it was a it was a good time to impress but there were so many of us but when I I'll say when I first went over on my own. That's when I thought, like, like I'm, I'm not looking. There's no, none of my boys are here. Like, it's just me. Yeah. So I've got to like lock in, and I, f- I felt like I done, I done, I done good. Um, but yeah, I say that's my first moment where I thought, okay, now it's time. Like, I'm here. Got to try and impress. So, yeah. And how would you say that sort of like having your boys around you? So, for example, like Eddie, ML. How does that like help you settle in? Yeah, helps a lot, especially like, see, um. Like like you said, Emil and Eddie, that I played with them when I was when I was young. So to see them in the first team now, and when I when I used to go over and used to train, I could feel more comfortable and not as less nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can play my game more and and not be scared of yeah, doing, yeah. making mistakes or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. just play my game. So when you're there and alone and you're seeing no one around, you don't know you can't really turn to anyone and yeah. ask or da da da. But yeah, so it it helps a lot. Yeah, what I wanted to ask is that obviously you were Arsenal, you were training. Um, as I said, you caught the attention of the manager there. So what's that step like from being in the first team to going out on loan? Do Arsenal sort of come to you and say, listen, Ty, we've got these offers from Lincoln, Doncaster, Sheffield. Mm-hmm. Or is it sort of agent led where your agent's sort of saying, we've got these offers. What do you want to do? How, how's that process of going on loan? I think it's a bit of both. Like I think it's got to be both. I think Arsenal and the agent come together, sort and me of course. Think about what's the best step next for me to do. Like so, I was playing in under twenty three for like, for quite a bit, and I think there's only so much you can do. And then you want to try and test yourself even more by going out alone. But you gotta find the right team, what suits you, and that's where Arsenal and my agent come into it and and try and pick the right team. So, but. Yeah, it was. It's difficult because my first loan happened to also quickly. It happened within like three days. I didn't have time to to think about it or yeah. anything. But I guess that's that's better for me. So instead of thinking about it, just go and do it and and see what happens and try and do your stuff. But yeah, it was a different experience for sure. Yeah, because I always look at young players and when they're getting loaned out. Because I speak to quite a few agents, it's, it's very key to get the right yeah. loan at the right time. Mm-hmm. I think someone that's key to that as well is Flo, um, Flo Belogan mm-hmm. he's obviously gone on loan to yeah. France totally dominated that league I think 18 goals whereas there's other situations where you look at it and think mm, yeah, that yeah. didn't work out and that can sort of have an impact on a player's career kind yeah, of thing for sure. so in terms of like deciding a loan is it based on like stats or are you heavily involved in that because I know some players sort of say you know this is where I want to go I think the style of play suits me yeah this is a ball play inside the manager likes this philosophy yeah. I fit into that kind of thing I think um yeah you when you go you look at how the team do and how they play their stats like if they're creating chances especially as a striker you've got to be creating chances so you've got to look at all the all the stuff that I don't do that obviously my agent <laughs> and, and yeah. also do that but yeah they got to look at all that stuff to make sure it's the right fit for me at the right time I just want to scroll back a bit. So you signed your pro contract in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So around that period, obviously your name was hot. Was there any other teams like saying, "Okay, you know what, Ty, oh, we're interested. <laughs> like, let me let me take a look at him." Or was it just Arsenal? Um, there was other teams, yeah. Um, at the time, but obviously I've been at Arsenal my whole life, mm. and I've always wanted to play for Arsenal first team. So it was one where I was focused on Arsenal. I was doing so well at Arsenal, mm. I was focused on Arsenal. And um yeah, I decided to start Arsenal. Okay, what so teams what teams are interested? Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can, if I can speak on that one. No, but no, it's in the past, isn't it? It's like yeah. <laughs> no, because it's actually interesting mm. because we had um Josh De Silva on recently and he's someone that you said like, you know what, I have to leave Arsenal to develop. Yeah. So yeah. he went down to the champ mm-hmm. and said, you know what, that's the best move for my career. Yeah. So obviously what we're trying to ask is that in terms of that period, was there like any other clubs maybe at champ level or prem level sniffing around saying, you know what, we want to take you, we want to build around you mm. kind of thing? There was um teams in Germany um, mm. and there was teams in the prem as well at the time. But um nothing was really concrete. Like It was all like mm. talk and, and interest and all that, but nothing really actually f- carried on further so I didn't really pursue it really I just thought let me just stay at Arsenal because I'm doing so well here and see what can happen 
Yeah, so let's talk about your first loan spell. So how did you find that? You know, because Arsenal, that's one of the Cat A yeah. sort of academies, training ground, pristine, treatment, brilliant. Then when you go down to like League One, it's like a culture <laughs> shock. You're even laughing. It's the so. biggest shock. I'll tell you that for free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember back in the day when like, the coaches would be like, oh yeah, <laughs> when you go on loan, like, you're not nothing to do. Like, I thought, yeah, whatever. <laughs> then I went, I'm thinking like, Rah. this is mad. Like, this is mad. Like, training ground was not big. Like compared to Arsenal, it's not big. Obviously the food and that is different. Facilities, the pitch is different. And so when I, my first day, I was shocked like I didn't know I didn't obviously I didn't know anyone either so it was all different to me um but it, you have to go over it quickly you're here to, to do a job and to play football so there's no time to really think about the other stuff you just gotta get on the pitch and do your stuff really and like how did you like settle in because sometimes like you hear people say oh this is the boy from Arsenal he thinks it's too good for this sort of situation yeah. but I remember when we spoke to like Brooke Norton Coffee when he went on loan mm-hmm. he took the culture of the club, the fans bought into him, he loved, yeah. he was passionate, he was everything about like what, what you want from a player to represent. So in terms of um, settling in, how was it for you on a personal experience? I think it obviously took me a couple of days to settle in. Um, I played against one or two of them like in academy level, so after that couple of days, we started to speak a bit, which helped. Mm-hmm. And then, but when I like to, when I go to new places like on loan, I like to not do a lot of talking, like, I like to earn respect through my my football mm-hmm. I like to I in training I'll work hard and do my stuff and then I I feel like the players start to respect you a bit more so you get you get that um relationship naturally so I feel like that's how that's worked for me most of the time going on loan mm, so how would you describe your first loan spot at Lincoln do you think it was a success or how what's your overriding memory I felt like it was a tester like it was um my I was 18 I think 17, 18, and then everything was just new to me. I was going into men's football for the first time, different style of play. I was just young, I didn't really know a lot, just focusing on myself, but living on my own as well. So it was all it was all different, all different. Um, I would, would I say it's a success? Probably not, but good for experience. Um, I got injured, um, so that cut my season short, and then COVID came. Yeah, so it was a that, yeah. That one, yeah, have to write that, yeah one that, that, that one don't really count to me, yeah. but nah, I enjoyed I enjoyed my time there. Um, for the short time I was there, the fans were good, teammates were good. Um, but yeah, it was it was a tough tough experience. So like, if there was one thing you learned about yourself during that first loan spell, what would you say that would be then? I'd say all the the whole um, living away from home, especially the biggest one. Um, Obviously, it's like two hours away from home, so you can't just go home quickly, get food, <laughs> and, and then come back. So, looking after yourself, finding food for yourself, all of this cooking, cleaning, all of that. I think that was the my biggest, my biggest learning. Go over that. And how difficult? How difficult was that in terms of, you know, not being able to go home and all of that yeah. kind of stuff? Was like, did you have visitors coming regularly? How 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 did you manage that situation? To be fair, I I actually got on with it well. I didn't really have visitors coming like that um a couple of my teammates moved in like two weeks after so it was like three of us in the house okay. so it, it turned out to be all right in the end but um yeah I, I would go home every weekend anytime i get a chance i'd go home just to see my family um which was which was good for me and then i'll go up and go back up and work for the week but um yeah i got used to it I'm always on PlayStation anyway, so it <laughs> doesn't matter whether I'm at home, yeah, far away, I'm always yeah, on PlayStation, yeah. so that's what gets me through days, basically. Yeah, so like, I had this same question for Josh De Silva. Um, in terms of when you signed that pro deal, was there a plan with you to say, OK, we're going to sign this pro deal, you're going to go out on loan, obviously you'll come back, we'll assess, see how yeah. you do, go out on another loan, or was there any sort of structure It was more so, we see you as a future first-teamer, just go out and loan and let's see what happens. Yeah, I'd say the second one. Um, when I signed, I didn't, it wasn't like, yeah, we're going to sign you, then next season we're going to go on loan. It was more of a, we sign you, obviously we want, we want you to stay, hey, we want you see a future here, so see how you progress. And then when the right time came, it was time to go on loan. Um, so, yeah, I would say it was just a, a natural progression. Mm, so in terms of obviously coming back from Lincoln, then you come back to Arsenal. So how was that next loan sort of decided when you went to um, Doncaster? Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty much of things. 
obviously I'd only played like what seven games at Lincoln, so there wasn't a lot to to watch um, from Doncaster. But I think it's just seeing if the manager can see something in you that he can wants to help you, like like there was the case at Doncaster when I went. Um, the manager was Darren Moore. And yeah, yeah. He yeah. said he. I spoke to him, he said he watched a lot of my games for twenty threes, he watched my Lincoln games, he said he could obviously see something, so he want he wanted to work with me and I was happy to to listen to him and and, and go and work with him. And I thought it was well. I think that loan was a success as well. Yeah, when you look at the stats, I think five goals in eighteen games, one in three. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, That's yeah. been your most sort of productive <laughs> yeah, spell yeah. in terms mm-hmm. of efficiency. Yeah, for sure. Um I really enjoyed that um that loan. I was there for the season. Um Obviously, I got injured twice, which has been the theme of my career, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, get on to yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was playing I was playing well. My first sort of like proper loan where I was like one of the main the main attackers and I was playing a lot of, a lot of the games and the manager had a lot of faith in me and he, he could see my ability. So I, I appreciate him for that. And um, yeah, I really did enjoy that as well, yeah. No, I want to dive a bit deeper into Darren Moore because recently we saw um, Chuba Akpom, you know, get the championship player of the season, mm-hmm. you know, championship top goal scorer with 28 goals, yeah. absolutely dominating the league yeah. this season. Yeah. He's been <laughs> smashing it in number yeah. 10 as well. Yeah. Let's make that clear. And I think in his post-match interview, when he broke the record, he was like, look, Michael Carrick is the manager I've been waiting for all my career. Mm-hmm. So in terms of Darren Moore, how... How much confidence did it give you when a manager believes in you? It's everything, I think. I think when a manager believes in you, it takes a little weight off your shoulder. I think <clears throat> when he knows that what you can do and he keeps playing you, and say you have a bad game, some manager will take you out and just put in an extra strike. But if the manager believes in you, he'll give you another chance and he'll, he'll work with you on the training pitch. So I think, especially as a striker, that's everything. I think the trust the trust in, is everything. Um, it will help you um, be positive when you're on the, on the field playing with your teammates. Scoring goals, if you miss a if you miss a chance, then he's always dead. Come on, keep going. So I, I really appreciate Darren for that. And he's always been in my corner. So yeah, I appreciate him. Mm, so after that loan spell, obviously you built up a solid body of work. Mm-hmm. So you come back to Arsenal. What's the conversation then? Because you prove yourself that not only are you a top youth team player, yeah. you're a top professional. Mm-hmm. So like we said, that was a, one of the successful loans um, that I've been on. So um, the talk was to go out again on loan. But try and get a better, um, better division, better team. So um, I went to Blackpool in Championship, which was, they just went up from League One. So yeah, that was that was a talk and try and test myself in a higher division and see see how I do. So I think that's how it went. It went pretty smoothly as well, to be fair. So um, yeah, it all happened quite quick. Mm, so how was that loan spell then? How would you sort of describe that, like increasing sort of from League One to Champ? Yeah. Like what was the sort of Subtle differences that you you realized. Um, to be fair, I didn't feel like what on the pitch. Yeah. Um, I say in champ, um, a lot of technical, technically better footballers mm. than League mm. One. Um, I think obviously the champ. There's better teams as well. Obviously, team coming down from the prem. Teams steady champ teams are, are good teams. <laughs> yeah. Very good solid. teams. Yeah, <laughs> solid teams. So there's not there's not really a hard, uh, easy game in in champ in championship <laughs> yeah. at all. I don't think so. It was it was a test for sure, playing against um, guys that have been in that league for how long, and doing doing well. So, and coming from League One to Champ, like you said, yeah, um, yeah, it was just technically really and a lot more running, I think, mm. <laughs> <laughs> off the ball, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and how how did you find that loan? Um, I think at the start it was good. I was enjoying it. Um, it was a long way from home as well. Mm. It's like three and a half hours, so I was on my own pretty much the whole time. No one wants to come to to Blackpool to see me. So, what, so the man then went, oh, that's yeah, that's far. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's far. Far. So I was like, fair enough, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight you. But, but bro, like it's it's important because like how difficult was that mentally? Because you're like what four hours away from home, you don't get to see family, yeah. you can't go back to ends. Yeah. Right, and then we quickly go for Nando's with the yeah, boys. Yeah. You can't do that. So. From a mental standpoint, man, how did you navigate that sort of challenge? I think the the previous two loans definitely helped me. I think if I went to Blackpool my first loan, I would have been in a in a bad place <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> I would have been in a bad place. So I think yeah, the previous two loans helped me a lot. Um, being in my own company and 
knowing how to to do things cooking cleaning like that so mm. it helped me a lot if i didn't yeah like i said if i didn't then pff, god knows Pete. yeah <laughs> so alone. even we've spoken about going on loans how is it behind the scenes so do I don't know, Lincoln, Blackpool, do they provide accommodation yeah. or do you have to like, out of your wages, find your own place? How, how does that work? So obviously the first few, maybe like a week or two, two, three weeks, you stay in a hotel while they look for your accommodation and they help you look for accommodation, which they, they pay for. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it's pretty much leave it to them and then just focus. Oh, so, that's nice. I didn't yeah. know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all right. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because obviously um, you go to Blackpool, then you go back to Arsenal again in the summer. But like during the last like three years, you've gone out on loan consecutively, so mm-hmm. three times in a row. So in the back of the mind, in the back of your mind, how are you feeling in regards to your Arsenal future at this time? Um, it was it was tough because while I was going on loan, people were getting opportunities at the time, which was tough to see because I'm. Maybe I'm thinking if I stayed, I, that would have been that would have mm. been me kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I guess you can't really think like that. You just gotta do what you're you're here mm-hmm. to do, yeah, mm-hmm. on loan, and the rest will follow, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So, but it was tough to see. But it was also nice to see my of friends, yeah, 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 playing playing for Arsenal and doing well. So yeah. So yeah, you come back from that spell at Blackpool, then you still go out again. <laughs> yeah. So I went to Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, that so was in the same, link- se- the same season. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you link up with Daryl Moore again, yeah, right? Darryl yeah, again. So <laughs> I think you only played one game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> what happened with that alone? Why was it one game and... Got injured. Ah, oh, get- yeah, okay. The first came on, first two minutes of the game, got injured. Okay. Jeez, yeah. yeah. So then you come back to Arsenal. Mm-hmm. So then what's the conversation there? Is it you're just doing your rehab? trying to prepare for the next yeah, season and stuff like that. Yeah, literally that. Just rehab, trying to get ready for pre-season, make sure I'm ready for pre-season to, to do whatever. Okay, I think we might as well speak about the loans, then the injuries yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. So I know you've been on loan at Ipswich. Mm-hmm. Then I know you sort of, the manager loved you there. Mm-hmm. I saw some quotes from Kieran McKenna. He's from Man United. Yeah, yeah. Highly from, rated coach. Wants to play football the right way. You were starting games, scoring goals. Yeah. Um, I think your last game was October the 29th against Charlton mm-hmm. the reason why I remember that is because it's my birthday <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. that's when it entered his 30s <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> entered his 30s not... next year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so talk to us about that that loan spell as well mm-hmm. how you found it I've enjoyed every minute of Ipswich to be fair I think um, as soon as I, I went to Ipswich the, the love and support I got was was great um, like you said the manager has nothing but good things to say about him. Um, and I hope he has the same to say about me. He's yeah, showed, he did. He was yeah. like, you were like so positive mm-hmm. around the group, even if you're not playing. Yeah. Like you're one of those characters that are yeah. infectious. You get along with everyone. Yeah. You came in early. You are, you know, the ultimate professional. Mm-hmm. So it's like they miss you. Yeah, no, I, I I felt the love, like I said, as soon as I went there, the manager showed nothing but faith in me on the pitch. So, and off the pitch, he's such a nice guy. You can talk to him about anything. And, and the, the, all the staff are like that, to be fair. And the fans are, are great as well um, throughout the whole season. So, yeah. And the teammates, they're doing so well. I'm so happy to, to be watching them and be a part of the team. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed every minute of it. So, in terms of, I think Ipswich, they're, I think they if they win their next game, mm-hmm. they're up. Yeah. So, how has it been like sort of watching the boys and seeing them be successful? Because that top three is, yeah, I think it's mad. Plymouth, Ipswich and Sheffield. Sheffield yeah. Another one of your old yeah. teams as well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's yeah. like a... Free horse race. So yeah. How how has that been watching it? It's been it's been nuts to be fair. <laughs> yeah. How you can't there's no room for error. Mm. So watching it is like you're sitting on the edge of your seat. Like every game is tough. Every game's a final. You, that's been our aim to get promoted. So um yeah, watching it, knowing you can't do anything and help mm. them is is very tough. So, but they're doing they're doing their job right now. Hopefully we can get the win on Saturday and, and sort the deal quicker than. Yeah. <laughs> you said we, so I just wanted to know if you get promoted, yeah, will you be getting like a promotion medal I and also so. yeah. will you be going <laughs> will you be going on the parade as well? Uh I hope so, yeah. Um, <laughs> um I don't yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know you're back at Arsenal, yeah, right? Yeah. So but you're still Ipswich, so mm-hmm. it's how does that dynamic work, even though you've been recalled to do your sort mm-hmm. of rehab, yeah, but you've played a part in the success. Yeah, so yeah. like will you be part of those celebrations? Yeah, I think um 
when I can like after training if I if I go at home game I'll, I'll quickly go to the game and see the, watch the watch the game see my teammates after and the manager so I'm still pretty much involved they always like every week someone's checking in on me from Ipswich seeing how my rehab's going and stuff like that so that yeah they always say you make sure you come I even had a call the other day one of them said um, make sure you come celebrate with us <laughs> when, we, when, when we get promoted. Oh, I like that mentality. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. if, when, when we yeah. get promoted. Yeah, that's yeah. the winner's mindset. So yeah, that's it's always nice when they when they call you and check up on you. Mm, yeah, that's that's dope. So when you say love, man, like what do you mean about like in terms of like falling in love with a club? Because like as fans or people that view the game from a distance, it's almost like a cliche. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, f- I fell in love with this club. But yeah. what does that mean to you? I think when when you get along so well with your teammates and your and the staff that like everyone's together, it's not like staff over there, teammates mm. over there, like we all eat lunch together, we all talk to each other, everyone's intermingled with each other. So it's a family more mm. like instead of a club, like everyone's so close together. Even the fans, the fans okay. fans at Ipswich are amazing. Like every home game's like I think the average is like twenty five thousand in yeah. League One's crazy. So they've been supporting so well throughout the whole season. So like like I said, it's like a big, big fan. A family, so yeah, I can't say anything bad about them. Mm, so when you're going on these loans, it's almost like not that you're getting further away from Arsenal, but do you feel like how do I phrase this properly? Like each loan is like you're getting further and further away, or you're getting further and further towards your Arsenal opportunity. I think it's a bit of both. I think the more loans you go on, the more further you get. Like me, I've been on like five loans. So I think, I feel like there's guys getting closer. Like if you stay at Arsenal, you're going to be training with first team. There's a lot of time to impress whether I'm on loan. I've got to do it in matches and hope they see, or if they're watching, then I do my stuff. But um, yeah, I think like, like you said, Bader going on loan now. He's mm. ripping up. Yeah. My boy Bader. So yeah. Big him up, yeah. Big, big, big up flow, yeah, big, big, big up, big up <laughs> yeah, every, so, day. <laughs> every day, all the time. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's doing his stuff. So I would say he's getting closer. So I, I guess it depends how. And it also depends how you see it because yeah. if you say closer, is he getting closer to Arsenal or is he, he stuck yeah, high exactly. to get sold to like a bigger club? Yeah. So it's almost like, obviously Arsenal, they're mm-hmm. progressing. They're going to be in the Champions League. Yeah. So there, they're going to be attracting a different caliber of player. Yeah. So obviously Eddie's in the door now because yeah. he took his opportunity and again yeah. he was in the right place to take it and once he was in there exactly. absolutely dominated <laughs> yeah. now he's a credible member of the first team. Yeah. So there's different ways to do it. You can go on loan, come back yeah. or you can increase your stock and go to another big team. Basically. Yeah. I guess everyone has their own path to yeah, yeah, So yeah. like Bakayo stayed at Arsenal his yeah. whole life and look at him, star boy now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <the> star boy. <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess yeah, everyone has their own path. Yeah. So you've got to just believe in the path and stay on that path and look forward and not back so now that your loan spell is technically over even yeah. though you're still yeah, part yeah. of the first team forward at Ipswich like where are you now like how how would you yeah because we've done like a little trail a timeline so yeah. you've gone on the loans you're back so right now what are you saying right now right the second I'm just trying to get back fit for, I'm ready for pre-season so obviously I'll be at Arsenal for pre-season um there will be talks that will need to be had about what I do for the for that season. If I stay, go alone, leave on a permanent. There's that's the talk that will need to be had at some point um in the summer. So yeah, I'm just at this point I'm just focusing on getting um back fit and ready for preseason as best I can be. And from a mental standpoint, where are you at? Obviously I've had back to back injuries now since October. So I've missed what, six months of the mm. season, so it's been tough to say the least this year, especially this year. Um, but my head—you can't keep dwelling on the past. You've got to just keep looking forward. The more you're in the past, the more down you're gonna get. But there's mm. no time. There's no time to be down. You've got to look at the next objective and and look forward into the future. Because mm, I've seen that. I know initially you had a hamstring injury. Yeah. Then I believe there was a reoccurrence of a quad injury. Mm-hmm. So how is that? Because as fans, we just watch the game, yeah, see yeah. players, oh, he's injured, move on with yeah, our life. On, exactly. Yeah. Whereas with players, <laughs> you're having to deal with the injury, yeah. like the oh, setback or oh, tie. You know what? We've had a setback. You're gonna have to. You're out on the grass in the next three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Then that three weeks come. No, it's another two weeks. Yeah. How do you keep dealing with that sort of back to back? Because it's this is the part of football that's not spoken about. Yeah. The sacrifice, the mm-hmm. struggle. 
And at the end of the day, you're a human being. You're young as well, yeah. 22 years of age. So how do you deal with that? I think family is a big part of it. Um, especially this year um, when I had... So I've done my, my second injury, the last rehab session of my, my hamstring. So the, the next day I was supposed to train with the, first, with the team. So I've done I've done that injury. And then when I've done that, mentally I was done. Like My head was gone. I didn't know what to do. But obviously your family is always there for you to pick you back up. And um, they helped me fo focus back on track. And I went home back to Arsenal. So I was living, I'm living with my family now and everyone's around me. So there's nothing more I can ask for, to be fair. Mm, so like, how bad does it get? Because we've spoken to people and they're like, you know what? Yeah. Mentally, I'm gone, yeah. etc. cetera. So, and it's, it's difficult. So how, how bad does it get for you? It's been bad. It's been bad, like questioning myself saying you know, why, why what's going on thinking what am i doing wrong what like what do i need to change like, all the time just questioning myself mm -hmm. but like i said you've got to get the right people around you to um to stop stressing and thinking about what i can change and what i can do mm -hmm. to try and stop this because it just can't keep happening if i'm just gonna keep going on loan or mm -hmm. not playing months after months not playing so I've got to try and change something with my family and my agent in the corner. Then, so like in terms of because with injuries, there's different types of ones. There's impact. There's those innocuous ones that you can't do anything yeah. about. There's genetically as well. Yeah. There's maybe muscle. thing muscle. muscle yeah. So there's Nerve. things where you can look at like mm -hmm. diet and stuff like yeah. that. So how 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 does it work? Yeah. Um. So all my injuries have been muscle injuries. Mm. Um. So this year I've been well. This year and last year. I've been like changing my diet, trying to try new things. Um, after this injury, I've had seen like two specialists on my body and how what I can change to, to the help composition, my body. yeah, kind of thing, different yeah. position of mm, my body's mm -hmm. things are out of place and need to get back into place. And so yeah, I've just been trying a whole a whole a lot of different things. Um, trying to figure out a way to stop stop the injuries from occurring. So yeah. What does your family mean to you, man? Because you've mentioned them four or five times, so it seems like you're a real family man. So, yeah. what do your family mean to you, bro? They, they mean a lot. Mm. They mean a lot. I think they've done so much for me um, when I was growing up, taking me to training, taking me back, taking me to school, homework, all of this. Mm. So, I, I just I just want to repay them, make them proud, and do the best I can. So, yeah, I wanted to move my family. Out, out of the ends mm. I've done I managed to do that no, which big up, big up. that's what we love to hear yeah. 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 on this platform we champion yeah. you know players doing well for the because I think fundamentally you've got a talent so it's about using that talent yeah. to uplift and support the people that are closer to you so yeah. big up for that bro yeah no I think that's probably been my, my biggest life achievement definitely so no. yeah just trying to repay them and make them keep them happy is probably very important so yeah so in terms of your contract at Arsenal, does it end at the end of this season? Next season. I got and one more year, yeah. One more year. Yeah. So how you are right now as we speak today, is that something you'll be opening on extending? Or do you think that maybe you might just need a fresh start? Whereas because you've been going along for yeah. three, four times, it's sort of like yeah. I'm up in roots. Okay, for the next three years, I've got a project here that I can get my teeth into. Yeah, um, for sure. I just want to settle somewhere where we're sign a new contract at Arsenal or going somewhere else on, on a permanent. I just wanna I think it's time to settle down and just focus and chill and instead of hopping on loan from loan to loan. Like it's it's difficult and it's draining of course. Um travelling to all these places. But yeah, like you said, I was trying to settle and focus on one team would be would be ideal, whether that's at Arsenal or somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. So at Arsenal it's an interesting one because it's like the team you want the team to do well. You're mm. an employee of a club. Yeah. But if your team does so well, it kind of limits mm -hmm. the opportunities because we're Liverpool fans and there was a time on our come up where youngsters were getting opportunities <laughs> for yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now when you look at only Trent and he's like a generational yeah. talent. Yeah. And I think Arsenal on that trajectory where mm -hmm. it's going to be more difficult for younger players. You've got Bakayo, yeah. you've got Eddie, Emil Smith-Rowe. He's been sort of in and out. Yeah. So like that next level now is that we demand top players that are ready made. Yeah. We can't yeah. bring in youngsters to yeah. sample. Oh, how does he do for free game? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, how do you sort of view that situation? Yeah. Um, obviously you want to 
play for Arsenal when you've been there for so long. Mm-hmm. You want to see them do well and win titles and mm-hmm. play in the Champions League. So, But like you said, yeah, it is tough, especially for the youngsters, to then progress into that first team because they're going to have money and they're going to buy mm. already made... That like, CL money. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> that CL money. <laughs> they're going to buy proven players because mm. they're going to want to keep staying in the Champions League, win titles. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very tough for the academy, but you can only do what... You can only control yeah, the controllables. Only, yeah, exactly. Yourself. So, you can only perform when you're told to. So, yeah, I guess you just got to keep looking forward and if you do get the opportunity, you got to take it. I think that's the key word in this football yeah. opportunity, mm-hmm. opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Because I think most players in the academy, you've got yeah. the ability, but sometimes you need luck. Maybe yeah, there's an injury exactly. or luck as well. Yeah, luck is a big part. Yeah. So it's football is, it's not just down to ability. There's so nah. many factors, yeah, man. It's a lot it's of a, different it's a, things. Yeah, it's a, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a crazy game. Mm-hmm. Isn't it's crazy. It? There's a lot of stuff. And in in terms of your future, have the club almost like had conversations with you in regards to okay, we feel that the next steps are going to be X, Y, Z. I haven't had that conversation with Arsenal yet. Um, yeah, I think that's that that would definitely come in the summer. I think obviously they're they're busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when they're prepared, yeah. 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 so what's the game starting today? today. Yeah. 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 At least they're worried right now. So. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that summer that conversation will be had and a decision will be made. So, yeah. so are you swaying or leaning to any sort of decision, or are you sort of like all is? Let's see what you're saying. Yeah, all is. I just wanna hear every every side, and I will pick the best um, option for me for sure. Yeah. Mm, so, in mm. terms of Mikel Arteta, I know he was someone that liked you as well mm-hmm. in preseason. He was one of you were one of the players that he said, you know, what, this boy's got potential, yeah. kind of thing. So. Are you in like direct communication with him? Have you spoken to him or anything like that? No, I haven't spoken to him, but obviously when he first came, I was training quite a lot and we used to like just speak then about like what I can improve on and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I would, I'm not in direct com- conversation with him. I, um, I see him at the training ground sometimes, high and by, but nothing, mm-hmm. no proper conversation yet. Mm, you raised the interesting point because I know you're back at Arsenal now yeah, for yeah. rehab. So how is that set up? Are you still seeing the first team players? Are you with the under twenty threes? Like, what's your sort of routine? So, um, I'm in the under twenty threes change room. I, I work with the under twenty threes physios and that. But I see the we see the first team like at lunch and in the gym every day. So I, I see pretty much all of them and speak to all of them. So yeah, I get to still see them and, and stuff. Okay, so what's the vibe right now? Because like, you know, <laughs> Arsenal going for the title. Yeah. Obviously, recently, there's been a few sort of... Yeah. People might call it slip-ups. Mm-hmm. People might just say they're playing better position. Yeah. You know, going away to Anfield, getting a draw. We're Liverpool fans. We yeah. should have won that. <laughs> the last time. I grew up a Liverpool fan as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, yeah. like, um, What's your take on Arsenal season so far? Like, watching it as someone that's part of the club and obviously a fan. Um, yeah, um... I'm so happy that they're they're doing. I think Mikel is such a such a good manager, and you can see how he's transformed the team and how they're playing now. Um, but that the energy and the vibe has been like everyone's been happy at the training ground, laughing, joking all the time. So, but they're they're very focused and concentrated. They know they know what's ahead. They know what's about. But you got to take um a game game by game. So you can't really get too highs on the highs and too low on the lows. So, um yeah, I think they're positive. They're confident. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they do it. Yeah, tonight's the big one. It's the isn't big it? one, yeah. yeah. Man City, <laughs> Arsenal. Big one. People are saying whoever wins, they're taking all of the marbles. It's a, it's a high-pressure game, man. High-pressure mm, game. Def- definitely. Have you had much dealings with Granite Xhaka? Um, I, sp- I speak to him sometimes. Like, how is he? Because like a lot of players, you hear them come out and say, he's a leader. Yeah, he, he is a leader. Leads, but yeah, how, yeah. how is he? How is he? He's a, he's a, especially on the pitch, like, he'll, he'll help you, talk to mm. you. Like If you've done something wrong, he'll tell you, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He'll let you know that you've done something wrong, but mm. you know to then fix up. And, and you <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know <laughs> but he's not like a, he's not this bad guy that yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah. paint him out to be. Mm. Not at all. Like, he's the opposite. In fact, he's, he's a nice guy. So I think, He's a big leader and a big part of Arsenal's success this season, yeah. Mm, so when you're watching like the first team, obviously you're training with the 20, when you link up with them, what sort of things do you look at and think, hmm, that's the reason why Arsenal have been successful this season? I think they're all just so humble and they all just get on with the job and they respect each other. They're all the team. 
Um, and uh, like I said, the manager as well, they, he's got the respect to the players and they're all playing together. As a, even if the guys on the bench, they're coming on doing their stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I think everyone's just playing for each other um, and they're going to need each other for the last however, however many games there is left. So, I think, like I said earlier about it, so it's just a family. Also, they're like a family. So, mm. yeah, they're all, they're all together. I want to dig deeper into um, Bakayo Saka because mm. for me... This season, whew, yeah, yeah, he's probably shoot. the best player in the Premier League, I would say, <laughs> with Odegaard and Haaland. I think I've said that on four <laughs> pods. I think I've said that on four pods now. But when you watch him, do you just think, yeah, this is world class? Yeah, I've been seeing this from for how long now? He hasn't. He's been playing the same way throughout his whole his whole <laughs> youth. He's exactly the same, playing exactly okay. the same. Nothing, nothing's changed at all. Like, I watch him, and he's been doing this since on the. 15, some of 16. So, so was he one of those players that when you played with him, first team, no wish, a million percent, you can, yeah, yeah. unless <laughs> anything, you're you're going to the top. Yeah, basically. he's going to the top, yeah. Because like, under 15s, under 16, he used to play up all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, when, as soon as he came up to, to um, Coney, when he was full time, okay. training 23 straight away, <laughs> okay. in and around the first team, like, <laughs> playing under 18s, just badding it up, like, it's easy. <laughs> right, but, yeah, it, it was it was destined to be fair. It was always gonna happen for me. I could see it from from young. Mm, because people always talk about how humble he is, but yeah. I don't like taking away from the ability. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people yeah. are like, oh, yeah, he's so nice. Yeah. 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 That was, no, that was like yeah, the narrative yeah, from yeah, England. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, such yeah, a nice yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about the character of the man, the ability. Mm. Like what you know him personally. Yeah. What's it about his character in terms of that that mindset that I'm just gonna take everything. I'm gonna dominate big games. I'm gonna just rip up my defender yeah. kind of thing. I think he just believes in himself a lot. Um, comfort, self-confidence as well. Um, I think he knows the ability he's got, so why not take on whoever? Like He doesn't care who's in front of him. He's just mm. going to play his game and try, and try and do the best he can. And I think, obviously, he's such a nice guy, like everyone says he is. <laughs> <laughs> but but on, the pitch, on the pitch, it's not about being nice. Yeah. It's about doing, what's, doing your job. So, yeah, no. Nah. I even remember a game against Man United this season where he just gave oh, Luke right. Shaw a, yeah, a torrid time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was, really. yeah. He don't care. He's in front. He just does his stuff. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Could be anyone. And what about Eddie and Ketia? Because I know you were, I think, roommates in yeah, Diggs yeah. as well. Diggs together, yeah. yeah. Talk to us about him because he's had a different road in. I think Saka was kind of accepted from the start. This is yeah, our yeah. star boy. Whereas Eddie, I know from the outside at least there was noise. Yeah, yeah. Is he good enough? Mm-hmm. And people saying, "Oh, give Flo Belogan a shot." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. This was before he got his big break in. Where I know he doesn't really care about the critics. Yeah, He's yeah. more Eddie's more of a I'm gonna prove myself right yeah, yeah, yeah. than critics wrong type mm-hmm. of person. So how was Eddie? Eddie is like a big brother to me. Like I've, when I was 16, I moved into digs with him. Um, so ever since then, like he's taken me under his wings, been a big brother to me, and training with him, playing with him, can learn so much from him. Like he obviously he's ahead of me, so I always used to look up um, to him when he's been in twenty threes. When he um, scored them two goals for the um, first team against Norwich, I was there cheering them on. Like, oh, sick. so yeah. yeah, it was. It's it's good to see him doing so well now, especially um, after all the things he's done in the youth, all the goals he scored starting to get his praise that he deserves. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah, so... Because I yeah, think with good. Eddie, I even learned from him in terms of mindset, mm-hmm. that belief that he's got, man, and yeah. the ability, married together, yeah. that's why we're seeing him be part of the first exactly. team and, and seeing him elevate. And what's mad, what's mad about Eddie is that everyone that's come onto the platform and said from early, he sniffs out goals <laughs> from early. <laughs> What, I don't what know how he does it. Yeah. I can't tell you how he does it. <laughs> I, I think that's a skill in itself. Like yeah. you can't learn that. I don't think. I think you either have it or you don't. Mm. Eddie has it for sure. Like you, you'll get goals come off his shin, his knee. <laughs> like, he's always in the right place yeah. at the right. But mm. I think that's a skill. Like that's just not luck. There's only a certain amount of times that it's luck. But he does it all the time, and he's always in the right place at the right time. So I got to say fair play to him. Even another one of your teammates before we come back to you again, Flo Belogan, yeah. as we mentioned before, yeah, he's yeah. this one's like a when he went on loan to Reims, people think, Oh, what's what's this about? Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is like a remote French team yeah. that we haven't really heard of. But the numbers and the stats speak for themselves, the performances yeah. speak for themselves. I know I saw some when I was doing my research, I saw you do some content together. I yeah, think yeah, like yeah. England under yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk to us about him because Arsenal fans kind of 
they love him, but they don't know much about him yeah. because he's been dominating the youth teams, mm-hmm. but he hasn't really had a chance at first team level. Yeah. That's another one of the bros. So, yeah, he came to Arsenal when he was like 12, 13, I think. And then, um, yeah, he's always been like sharp, like always <laughs> been sharp as yeah. hell and skillful and, and whatever. But when he got to like under 18, that's when he really started to boy and like his name was ringing scoring goals every <laughs> single week every yeah. single week so but I, like I've always seen it as well he's, from young he's been scoring goals so what he's doing now is not really a surprise it's just a matter of time and an opportunity like you said so even you say he didn't get opportunity but he scored two goals in the Europa League for the for the Arsenal so yeah take his chance and that's what happens he's a goal yeah. scorer so yeah and talk to us about representing England um, so I made my debut uh under sixteens. Um and I've played pretty much every age group since then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've played sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's it's definitely a big achievement for sure, especially especially now you get into that age. Now um it's getting tough to get into that twenty one mm-hmm. side, you've seen the names in that no, in that yeah. team. Joke. Crazy, yeah, yeah. Joke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nuts. <laughs> so yeah, I think Playing for England is, is such a big deal in your in your career for sure. Yeah. No, so I was gonna say. So in terms of like your international future, do you qualify for any other nation? Dominica, or... isn't it? Dominica and yeah. Barbados. Okay, yeah. so is that something you will consider if they said this and tie? We want you in the first team. No, he's still got aspirations for England. No, but on the real, is that something that you will consider I know you've got aspirations for England yeah. everyone does but in terms of like the future maybe in the next let's say two years or so is that something you will potentially consider or um, you're just focused on getting into that England yeah team? it's not really crossed my mind it's it. not really crossed <laughs> my mind as long as you just want to play club football yeah, sort yeah, that yeah. out get yeah. fit have yeah, a few yeah, seasons exactly. that's my main priority yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, yeah I haven't really thought about that to okay. be fair it's not something I thought of I think every, every kid from England always wants to play for England so yeah mm, I want to talk about you because like Again, obviously you've had injuries, but I'm all about solutions. Like, how how do we get to the bottom of it so we can <laughs> this get? This is what you? I'm trying to find out. Because <laughs> so, like, yeah, I want you to get like a full season yeah. because I think a full season tells a lot. Obviously, it tells mm-hmm. this play is durable. Yeah. And also, what do you deliver in terms of numbers mm-hmm. and stats? Then it gives you okay, this is my level. Yeah. Whereas with you, there's been sniffs. Oh, hey, mm-hmm. score goals, yeah, yeah. dominant, then injury. injury so yeah. it's like that's that's the thing yeah. because football. So, it's like a, it's a beautiful career, but yeah, it's a short, short career. Day, yeah. And when you get sort of like injuries and stuff, there's that next kid coming through. Mm-hmm. And it's like, because you're not playing, you're out of everyone's sort of eyeballs. Then it's, yeah. oh yeah, he used to be at mm-hmm. Arsenal. Kind of. yeah, so yeah. that's why I want you to like, yeah. I need you fit, man. Yeah, because, yeah. Bro, <laughs> yeah, 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 bro, yeah. because you've got the ability. Yeah. You've, you're technically astute. You've got the physicality, left foot, right foot. Mm. You can do everything. But now it's just about showing it yeah putting it into yeah. I think that's just been that's been my main thing since mm. I've been what 17 18 just trying to stay fit every season I've had a big injury I don't do little in, like every time I get <laughs> yeah. injured it's something so long, long. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the main thing right now that I'm trying to cut out I think if I cut that out I'll do a lot I should be a lot better than where I am now mm. um numbers wise physically um so yeah i think i feel like i'm always playing catch up when i'm getting injured having to come back and then do well again and mm. so yeah it's been tough but i feel like if i cut that out i'll be in a good place for sure so do you think the way you see it do you think it's like a controllable or do you think it's oh, i've just been unlucky or do you think is it your body is it because you know you hear about certain athletes being like explosive athletes yeah. so they're, they've got fast twitch muscles mm. so they're like more susceptible yeah is it something like that or do you think that what well, I couldn't tell you, I'll be honest. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. This is what I'm trying to find out. Yeah. I've seen specialists, mm. been doing work with some specialists, so doing exercises to try and strengthen different parts of my body to help without, I'm using certain parts of my body more than I should be. So I'm trying to build up muscle for other parts of my body so I don't, so that my body's balanced. But I'm trying things to to, to stop it. Bro, man, you're still young, and That's again, like a perfect example is Chuba, bro. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people are sure, thinking, yeah. "Oh, 
his career has just like mm-hmm. plateaued and then all of, all of a sudden mad spike now yeah. he's the best player in the championship yeah obviously we're talking about the aspirations mm-hmm. but you're just trying to get fit mm-hmm. for um pre-season so is there any plans over the off season to do i don't know a hot weather training camp because you speak to pros now and they're like you know what i'm taking my two-week holiday <laughs> the man's going to dubai <laughs> you get what i'm saying no i think but as a footballer you, you need you need some time some time to rest because it's been such a obviously a long season and whatnot so but that's not really my my aspirations for this summer. I think I've got to stay fit and come into preseason as best as best as I can, in best shape as I can, because I got hit ground running. I need to decide what I'm gonna do, whether I'm gonna stay, go. I need to be ready to do whatever. So I think this summer I'm gonna definitely put in the work for sure. Yeah, like my last question was in regards to the Arsenal fans, because bro, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, two, three years ago. Your hype on Twitter, social media, <laughs> Instagram, the Arsenal fans were saying, this guy, you are the truth. Yeah. So what do the Arsenal fans mean to you, bro? Because they've supported you from day dot. Exactly, from the jump. Um, I love all the Arsenal fans. They've been with me since however how long I can think of. Um, so obviously playing on the 16s, on the 18s, on the, on the 23s at Bournemouth, where they'll come support, see, see if um, how we're doing. I always get like messages even now saying how am I doing? Um, when you are Arsenal, <laughs> like they love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. As a young star, you need that as well for your confidence. Um, mm. It's always always nice to see fans on Twitter um, saying good things about you, and it, it helps you on the pitch. Um, gives you self confidence a lot. So yeah, and no, I love I love all the support that I get from from anywhere, especially Arsenal. Yeah. Mm, so how's your relationship with like social media? Because you speak to some pros, they like stay away from yeah. It. So negative place, etc. Yeah. <laughs> but like, how? What, what do you? What do you think about it? I try to stay away from it as much as possible, especially like when I'm playing games. I'm fit. I try not to look at social media, especially Twitter. Yeah, I that's try to stay. Yeah, <laughs> we're toxic, talking about yeah, yeah. toxic place. Yeah. Mason Mount came off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to stay away from it um, as much as I can. Mm. But you're gonna see some stuff. Yeah, inevitable. Yeah. So. But yeah, I don't. Obviously, just slap on that burner. Because <laughs> <pretty good. laughs> nah, that's when you start thinking oh, stuff. Okay. And you, see, you see things you're thinking, oh, yeah, nah. Yeah. But yeah, nah. I try to stay away from that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, man. And talk to us about life outside of football. I know you mentioned it earlier. You're always on the PlayStation. Yeah. What game are you banging? Is it COD? Is COD, it yeah. COD. Is it Warzone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Warzone. Yeah, yeah. Pro like, it's, yeah. it's even one of them two. I okay. Don't... Yeah, other than that, I live a boring life, to be fair. I don't, like, I go train, I go home, play PlayStation. That's mm. pretty much my life. I might go out to eat here and there, but that's a, pretty much it, to be fair. What, you on TikTok or YouTube? You got any, like... YouTube. I don't oh, watch TV. I just go on YouTube. So, what, who's your favourite content creators? Kais and that, you know, you, um, on Twitch and that. No. no, I'm not. Uh, t- we're probably no, too no. old. We're probably. <laughs> you're you're thirty. You're thirty. He's thirty. He's thirty. Thirty-two weeks. What's the speed though? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I watch. I watch guys like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's very entertaining. Yeah, like, I remember, was it during that Sideman show? Like his yeah, profile yeah. just spiked. Yeah, 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 he's a funny Mad guy, man, isn't he? Ronaldo, isn't he? Yeah. So I watch stuff like that. I watch um. Like a lot of football stuff as well. We're watching football clips and whatnot. So yeah. And in terms of like music, well, what are you rocking with? I'm a Gunner Gunner fan. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm so is it just straight American rap or are you dabbling I'm, with the Afro beats? The Afro UK? beats. Oh, okay. I'm on Afro beats. Yeah. yeah. American English. Yeah. Here and there. Here and there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly American or Afro beats, especially oh. now. Yeah. Okay. What artists? Okay. Gunner. Who else? Like, in terms of the Afro beats. Afro beats. Obviously, you've got Osaka. Yeah, he's um, the man of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, you've got Burner Boy with yeah, kids. Those so are the, yeah. That's who pretty much I listen to. Okay, yeah, okay. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so like, what else? Anything outside of football that I've started asking this question recently, like how footballers protect yeah. their world because it's a short career. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, like, you're earning good money. Mm-hmm. So is there anything outside of the game that you're doing at the moment? I know you're still young, so yeah, yeah. I think sometimes when you're young, you need to get out of your yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But is there anything you're doing to maybe protect your wealth? Not at the moment. Well, I've got obviously your investment in the house and, and oh, stuff, bigger, but yeah. um, I haven't looked into it more than that. Um, that's something that I will definitely get into because, like you said, it's a short career. You don't earn all this money for the rest of your life. So you've got to make sure your money's tied up into some good investments. So 
that's definitely something I will be looking into. And what does your community mean to you? What do you mean by that? In terms of like giving back or helping people, like what what have you got a strong emphasis on that? Yeah, I always like try to like always give boots, I send back oh, home to dope. some charities and dope, stuff, dope. Um, and like my shirts and that. So I always try to to give back to people I can no, um, as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm, so just in terms of yeah, last message to Arsenal fans or even Ipswich fans because <laughs> both of the teams, it's like every club recently you've been at is touching success. Yeah. Sheffield Wednesday promotion chase, yeah. Ipswich about to get promoted, Arsenal in a title race. So like any, got the magic touch. Yeah. <laughs> so any sort of message to Arsenal fans in terms of I don't know your hopes for the future, hopes for this season as well. Um, first of all, I hope they win they win the league for one. Um. And I just want to say, uh, appreciate the support from coming coming up from however long it's been, how many years it's been, um, and yeah, I'll be back for sure, doing what I do best um, on yeah. the pitch, and hopefully yeah. it will stay like that as well, and less injuries and score more goals. So yeah. No, definitely, man. And bro, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come onto the platform, and we love your journey. We're gonna be supporting, man. And good luck for the future and for next season my bro thank you for having me mm, hopefully no, in the next it. sort of 12 months we can yeah. have another sit down yeah. and you've had a mad season <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's the plan yeah that's the yeah. plan yeah for sure oh, yeah, by summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it my so, bro but yeah love man love I love so we've got a closing tradition on this podcast mm-hmm. where we ask you know the guest that's experienced this wonderful <laughs> podcast <laughs> 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 to recommend um a guest in football or a potential guest in football to come onto this platform. So after experiencing this again wonderful <laughs> podcast, where do you stand? <laughs> Who do you recommend? Who do I recommend? Um I'm trying to think that's an interesting story. And someone that you can potentially help with. <laughs> it's, not like a dream, <laughs> it's, not a dream, it's not a dream. And we're guest. gonna be instant DM <laughs> you. So we're gonna be putting um, pressure. <sighs> Try it. Flow. Elegant. Okay, you can help with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See what I can do. I give. I'll say. I'll say my part. But yeah. yeah. No, I think he's a he's a good dad. He will. He, will, he might come on there. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. real man. We know yeah. his people. He's yeah, a good yeah. guy. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So we're gonna leave it there. That's another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. I got Tom in the background giving me the eye saying, "Listen, your time is up." <laughs> so over and out. Until next time. Peace.